we're now going to build models, linear models, from real world data. And this is an important skill to have. And there's two things to do with this skill. One is to be able to create what we call a scatter plot and interpret it and understand if it's linear or not. And the other is to come up with a model that shows what's going on as best as we're able. It's not going to fit perfectly because data doesn't always fit perfectly. But that's okay. Can we get a good idea of, of what's going on and what it means? So we're going to start with an example from baseball. And so here's some baseball teams and how, how, what their on-base percentage is versus how many points they score. And you'd expect as they get more people on base, they have a better chance of scoring more points. But that's what we want to see is we want to see if that's actually true. And so we create a scatter plot by creating points. So this is what we call a scatter plot. And we got it again by taking a point from the on-base percentage and the run scored. And we can see the different teams placed over here. Here's the New York Yankees at 36.6 and 968. Here's the Kansas City Royals down at 32.2 and just a little over 700. Now, as I mentioned, one of the most important things to do is be able to create a model that represents this to the best of our ability. And so we pick two points. And I'm personally a fan of, I like getting the extreme. So I'm going to pick the New York Yankees, which have a point of 36.6 and 968. And my other point is the Kansas City Royals, which is 32.2 and 706. And what I want to do is create a linear model. And so our linear model is f of x equals mx plus b. And we have our linear model. And to go with it, we have two points. So whenever I have two points, that means my first thing is to find the slope between those two points. We get 968 minus 706 divided by 36.6 minus 32.2. Okay, a little ahead of myself there. So 968 minus 706 is 262. On the bottom we have 36.6, 32.2 from that is 4.4. We're going to grab our calculator. We're going to take 262, divide it by 4.4, and we get 59.54 repeated. And so here's my slope. And what this says is for every percentage you increase your on base percentage by, you'll increase your score by 59 runs. Well, to finish the problem, we need to use our point slope form. So we're going to get y minus uh, y value 706 equals m times x minus 32.2. And we could use either point. I'm just using the smaller one. Now we evaluate this, and we know what m is. m is 59.54. We'll just round it to two decimal places. Keep it simple. We need our calculator again, though. 59.54 times 32.2 is 1917. So we're going to get 59.54x minus 1917.19. Add 706 to both sides. So we'll make this negative. We'll then add. 706 and get minus 1211 point one nine. So here's my model and this says that if I can increase my points by one or my on base percentage by one I'll increase by about 59 points. However there's a significant breakdown here. Notice that this y intercept says that if I don't ever get anyone on base that means I'm going to lose 1,211 points. That's a big deal. That means there's a point where this model matters. And this is where we have to stop and think, because we've now created this line. And we have to ask ourselves, does this model make sense within certain constraints? And it does, as long as my on-base percentage is in the 30s range. It doesn't make sense for really low values. And you'll notice that very, very, very few points actually make it under there. In fact, this one's kind of an outlier. He's well above the average for what he should be. 
given the two extremes that we used. Okay, the last thing that we want to talk about now with scatter plots is suppose we have the following scatter plots. And these come from different data sets, but what we're interested in is which of these are linear and which aren't. So as we look, if we could approximate this with a line, we could draw a line like this going through the points that's mostly straight. So we can say this is linear, and we can say it has a negative slope. But as I look at the other two, notice that this one doesn't have a nice curve. It's got this kind of funny U-shape to it. Since that's not a straight line, this is non-linear. In addition, this one looks like it's got this funny little curve going to it. So this makes it also non-linear. So as you're looking at your curves, if a straight line works, it's linear. If it doesn't, it's non-linear.